Tableau Pulse is out. 24.1 is also out. So I'm going to start making my way through all of these videos this week. Today, we're going to show you how to enable Tableau Pulse on Tableau Cloud. And for those of you wondering, Tableau Pulse will not be coming to Tableau Server. I'll cover that in the end of this video. As ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're here inside of Tableau Cloud. You can see that I've got a brand new vanilla user admin here that's logged into Tableau Cloud for the first time. I'm sort of simulating this because I think there might be some server admins who are now coming to Tableau Cloud and doing this for the first time. So I'm gonna sort of create a similar experience to try and uh, give some parity to that journey. So um, to enable Tableau Pulse, there's actually a couple of steps that you have to go through. Um, I will say that Tableau have some pretty good documentation on this. That's essentially what I've followed, but let me just walk you through the basic steps here and then I'll show you where the documentation is. It will also be in the comments and the description below. So let's go ahead and start by going to the settings option over here on the left hand side. If we go ahead and click on that, we go to this page and this page has had a lot of settings added to it over time. So if we scroll down, you'll see there's a couple of options. And, and the two things you need to bear in mind here are actually uh, these specific two items. Now, I'm gonna break these down in a separate video because I do think they need their own video. But in essence, over the last six months, Tableau have been talking about two core technologies, Tableau Pulse, and something they've sort of rebranded a couple of times, mainly to do with AI. What they're calling it this time around is Tableau AI. So Tableau AI, think of this as the underlying technology that's powering all the AI-based experiences on the Tableau platform. So Tableau Pulse is one part of that. It's gonna be using Tableau AI in some of its capabilities. There'll also be other AI-based features coming out in the future that will also lean on Tableau AI. So in order for all of those AI capabilities to work, Tableau have a separate toggle here to enable this to happen. So you can see here that we have a setting and it's mostly sort of geared towards Tableau Pulse, but you can see here that the specific setting it's actually asking about, it's enabling Tableau Pulse insight summaries to use generative AI to summarize key metric insights using natural language. And this is a, this is a very specific permission because what this is actually saying is that AI is not generating the insights. The insights are actually coming out of your raw data. What is actually happening is that insight is being fed to an AI system. I think it, I think it's actually ChatGPT in the background, and that system is taking those summaries and trying to synthesize that into a sentence, very much like you might go to ChatGPT, give it a bunch of uh, sort of sentences, and ask it to summarize that into a briefer, more succinct sentence that still reflects the truth and is still sort of well curated. So that's what's actually going on here, and this checkbox is enabling that capability to happen. Once you've done that you can then go ahead and enable the core Tableau Pulse experience. So up here, you'll see there's a separate checkbox for Tableau Pulse. And notice I don't have Tableau Pulse on my left-hand side banner. When you have it, it will appear in this red space that I'm highlighting right now. Uh, once you go ahead and hit turn on Tableau Pulse, you'll see you get a couple of other options. You can actually enable it for specific users or for a specific group. And this is actually quite useful because you could do this for, let's say, your uh, developers who are coming on for the first time to build this metrics in case you're sort of doing a phased rollout. This is really handy for that. So you can create your sort of test group and then everyone else and then once you're ready, you can enable it for everyone once those metrics have been curated. And so what will happen here is it's just about disabling and enabling an option on the left-hand side. I'll come to this shortly. Uh, but once we go ahead and we go ahead and say for all users on this site, because it's just me essentially on this Tableau Cloud test environment, we can go ahead, hit that option. And as soon as we hit save, you'll see that Tableau Pulse appears over here on the left-hand side. You can see it right there at the very bottom. So Tableau Pulse is now enabled. As soon as we've done that, it's enabled. It literally happens in screen. I didn't need to refresh the page. If I go ahead and click on that, it actually goes to a separate experience. So that's sort of the first thing to bear in mind. As soon as you enable Tableau Pulse, you're not gonna be staying in the existing Tableau environment. You're actually going to end up going to a net new environment. This is a sort of uh, interesting decision by Tableau and I can kind of see how they've arrived at this, but at the same time, it's still not the best. So what we'd want in the future is for this to stay part of the same Chrome so you're not having to switch between Tableau Cloud and Tableau Pulse. I'll just double check that's still the case because I think previously when I clicked on this logo, yeah, it stayed here in Tableau Pulse. When I click on Tableau Pulse, it stays here. And on the right-hand side here, there's still no option to go back to Tableau Cloud. So that's something to remember. And it's not opening up a new tab. It's actually just going to a new window. So if I just show you my side menu, I'm actually still in the same page. And if I go back, 
you'll see that it actually goes to Tableau Cloud there. So that's sort of my uh, side menu there showing you that experience. So just, just make sure you explain that to users that if you're enabling this for the first time, it will go to Tableau Pulse, but they'll need to have a bookmark to Tableau Cloud available so they can go back. That's such, a, such an important thing because I think people will get lost and they'll want to go back to something familiar and they won't be able to use it. So that's how to enable Tableau Pulse. It's super simple. Now, there's a couple of things that I'm sure you're going to all want to know about, which is if we go to Tableau Pulse, how do the permissions work? Now, I've done a video on permissions here on YouTube. I'll put a sort of screenshot to that and I'll put a link to the descriptions that goes into permissions in incredible levels of detail. What actually specifically happens with Tableau Pulse is a slightly interesting decision. And Tableau sort of broken this down into sort of uh, key areas. So if I go down to this uh, documentation here that I've already got open, they break it down into the three key areas. And again, I'll put this into the uh, description below. But essentially, there's two things you need to understand. Permissions for creating metrics and permissions for viewing metrics. And fundamentally, uh, they follow the same sort of dynamic as you'd have relative to the data source. So as a simple example, to create a metric, you need to have connect permissions to that data source. So you can't create a, 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 a metric unless you have uh, connect permissions to that data source. The other thing is the role that you have, the actual license type that you have needs to be specifically the creator or site admin explorer or explorer can publish setting. It's a bit of a weird one, I know, but those are the specific roles you need to be able to create metrics. And then once you've sort of gotten over that hurdle of creating metrics, the next thing you need to bear in mind is who can see those metrics. And so those metrics are essentially pinned to four criteria. You can see them here. Uh, the credentials for a data source are embedded. So essentially, uh, in this particular case, the credentials uh, sort of sit with inside the data source, so everyone can essentially see the metric if they've got permission to see that data source, essentially. The next one is the user's credentials are passed to the data source with single sign-on. So essentially, it's impersonating the user, and it's passing that on to the relevant uh, data source. The user's credentials are saved for the data source. For more information, uh, see managed credentials for data connections, and it kind of sends you off to another page. And the last one is the data source doesn't require the user to authenticate to access data. So you've got some sort of baked data, or it's coming from a flat file, and therefore there's no real authentication required. And so everything here is super, super important. Now, if we just sort of step back a minute and we just look at this whole paragraph, um, you'll see here that the, this, this top paragraph is super important. The ability to see the data for a metric depends on access to the data in the data source that the metric is connected to. So the published data source, the actual data source itself, the permissions for that drive this whole experience, okay? Tableau Pulse doesn't prompt users to sign into the database or data connection for that data source. Instead, one of the following must be true for the user to see the metric data. And so that's why I went through it in that order because you kind of, you kind of do need to know about this and then you need to sort of understand the overarching principle that kind of drives this behavior. So this is super important uh, to understand once you've enabled Tableau Pulse, just to know what's going to be happening. The other reason this is important is because you don't have it in the same place. Now, if, if you're wondering, what do I mean? Well, if I go over to Tableau Cloud and I go to Explore, let me just close the sidebar and we go to a data source. Let's go to uh, this data source here. I'll just look at this as a list and just see which one which one makes the most sense. Let's go to uh, Sales Commission as an example. So if I go to Sales Commission, you'll see that I, I see a basic sort of setting around the data source. It's just a hyper file. But if we go over to uh, the permissions and I just go down here to permissions, you'll see that I get this sort of matrix. And this matrix allows me to see what's going on with my data source. And they follow specific templates. And you see here that you have different permissions to view, connect, uh, download data source, save, overwrite, and so on and so forth. These are very easy to understand, and you can literally see what's going on. If I wanted to see, for example, what access does Tim get, you can see I can type Tim, and it shows me a tick under the two sets of permissions I might have. And this also works with um, with groups. If I type in tests, and you'll see that um, actually <laughs> in this particular case, that's not going to work because I don't have um, the group set up for this data source. So never mind that. But in my permissions video, I do give an example of this. You can actually test people's permissions and make sure that they work. Uh, down here, you're only ever searching for a user. Up here, you can indeed add uh, users or groups, if that makes sense. So I kind of got myself lost there. But nonetheless, that is a super important thing to understand. You can't see this when you're in Tableau Pulse. So you need to understand this for the data source here 
before you then go start planning what you're going to do with the metrics in Tableau Pulse. I think that will cause a few issues uh, between, you know, people sort of understanding what's going on and why they can't see things. It might need you to switch between a few tabs to diagnose what's going on, but that's essentially what you need to do. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You enable Tableau Pulse. Once you enable Tableau Pulse, you head over to the landing page. It's now out of beta, so it's now public. It's now launched. A couple of things to bear in mind. Uh, I had Pulse metrics in the beta and they've been wiped. So if you've come from the beta and you've gone to the live experience, um, at least in my case, they've been completely wiped. So I have to start again. I'll use a video opportunity to show you how to do that. And then the second thing to bear in mind is metrics uh, get deprecated. So with the release of Tableau Pulse, previously built metrics will essentially disappear from your cloud environment. So you might get a few people reaching out to you saying, hey, I've lost some metrics that I used to have here in Tableau. Where has it gone? It's because Tableau Pulse has deprecated those capabilities. So um, uh, Tableau Pulse not being available in Tableau Server, this is a decision by Tableau. They are trying to encourage customers to move over to Tableau Cloud. That's where they think the best Tableau experience is. I'm not here to debate on that topic. I'm just passing the message on that as sort of the official line about Tableau Server versus Tableau Cloud. It's pretty clear, and it has been for some time now, that Tableau really wants everyone to move over to Tableau Cloud. And so you started to see a lot of capabilities and APIs and features coming to Tableau Cloud to make it easier for customers to move. Now, that said, Tableau Pulse is probably gonna be the first big feature to really create that pressure for customers. So I'd be really interested to know if you're a Tableau Server customer, if this is something that's gonna to start to make you think about moving. I know some customers don't mind moving to the cloud, but I know others just can't move to the cloud. And so it's going to leave those customers a little bit in the dark. And it's gonna start creating a bit of a gap in terms of feature parity. Eventually Tableau Cloud will be the better product. In my next video, I'll go into the process of creating a pulse metric and a metric definition. Those two come in hand in hand, and I think they need their own time. If you can't wait, go ahead and check out my one hour video where I went through this for the very first time a couple of weeks ago uh, when the beta went out and I got my hands on it for the first time. You can see my raw impressions and my hot takes on how I experienced it for the very first time. So go ahead and check out that if you can't wait for the next video. Otherwise, check back hopefully tomorrow where I'll have the next video on this topic. Thanks for watching. And also, thank you for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. It's super awesome. But still, still, a large percentage of you do not subscribe to the channel. So if you can hit that subscribe button, we can get to that next goal. Maybe we can reach a million in the next few years. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.